Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela and today I thought we could talk about some of my favorite things from 2019. Um, honestly, it was really, really hard to do this. So I feel like these are more like winter favorites, like things I really liked in November and December. Um, it's just really hard for me to pick like entire year favorites, especially when it comes to certain categories like books or movies or things like that. So, so let's just kind of consider this like a November, December favorites, as well as some things that I feel like are definitely items that I loved all year or that topped the list for me for things that I loved from the entire year of 2019. Now this list is going to cover things, beauty product things, a few clothing items, as well as books, podcasts, movies, things like that. And I tried to narrow it down to just one in those categories. So, all right, so let's just start with beauty stuff. The first thing I wanna mention, and you've probably heard me mention many times before, is this Fenty Beauty Lip Gloss. It is in the shade Fussy. This has to be one of my all-time favorite lip glosses. I don't wear a ton of lip gloss. I usually wear, well, I usually wear like an Agave Lip Balm or a uh, Sarah Hap lip balm or lipstick. So lip gloss is not a super common thing for me just because I, I don't necessarily love like the sticky feeling and I don't like uh, if the wind blows and my hair gets stuck in my lips. You know what I mean? It can be a whole thing. But I really love this Fenty Beauty. It just has, I already have some uh, lip stuff on so it's gonna kind of, you know, obviously mess up the true color. But this is just, first of all, it smells divine. Um, and second of all, it just has such a beautiful kind of natural for me anyways and what my natural lip color is it just feels like a really good enhancement and not like uh you know like a, a major color of a lipstick or red or something like that so it feels like a really good nudish neutral for me and my skin tone and my skin color and i feel like i can wear this when i'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt or i can wear it when i'm dressed up even more and it all just feels right no matter what i'm wearing if that makes sense all right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is a few skincare items. And these things are things I don't think I've ever talked about at all on either one of my channels, which is kind of crazy because I do talk a lot about skincare and beauty stuff because it's just stuff that as I'm aging, I really enjoy taking good care of my skin. Um, I didn't do a good job of that in my early 20s. And so I'm trying now in my 30s to be better about taking good care of my skin. Um, so one of the first things is this Osmosis MD Pure Medical Skin Care Polish. This is a polish firming like enzyme mask. Um, I have always used like very aggressive, I guess they're called physical exfoliants. I could be totally wrong here but follow, tra track with me for a second. Physical exfoliants, I believe, are the kind that have like the little beads in it and it kind of like scrapes and scratches. Whereas this, I believe, is a, uh, is it called a chemical exfoliant? I think so, because it's basically an enzyme that you put on your skin that acts as an exfoliant. And I really like this because I have very dry skin, but I don't like to be too rough on my skin. And sometimes certain exfoliants can just feel rough. I use different ones on my body in the shower and stuff but I really like this. I use it once, maybe twice a week. I just put a thin layer of it over my face, leave it on for five to 10 minutes. Yeah, it says five to 15. I usually leave it on for five to 10 and then wash it off and the next day, I feel like I have a new, fresh, sort of youthful looking layer of skin to work with. So I've really been enjoying this. I'm trying to remember where I got this. I can't remember anything that I can link, I will. I don't remember where I got this. It might've been from an esthetician that I saw this year, um, but I will see if I can find Find it to link it because I can highly recommend that product and then this I have never used a retinol um, or you know a retin-a cream at all before this year and so I asked my esthetician you know I said okay I'm, I'm 35 I think it's time that I start using something and I kind of wish I would have started using it a lot sooner but that's okay you know you live and you learn and so she recommended this one for me uh, that I guess is a little it's pretty gentle it's the uh, red advance I think it's how you say it, Red Advance from Obagi Medical. Um, and it is a skin rejuvenating complex. It says apply three pumps to the face and massage gently into the skin, feather onto your neck and jawline. I can tell you guys honestly, there are few products that I really feel like it make a noticeable difference. Um, there are things that feel good to me and that I really like and I feel like maybe I notice something and I just keep using because I really like them. Um, but this is a product that I can just hands down tell you that I have seen 
results from. Um, I was really hesitant to use it because I've heard other people say that retinols um, really dry out their skin and I already have dry skin. So I was just kind of nervous to use a medical grade product. I don't know why, it's silly, but I really have seen some amazing results in the texture of my skin, in my pores. I just feel like uh, certain areas of my skin that I've never thought like, oh, that area looks really nice or whatever. Like I'll, I'll see it in the mirror and I'll think, man, that looks really like baby skin in certain places on my face that I've just been so impressed with this. And this is by Obagi Medical, like I said. So uh, definitely, definitely this product is a will be moving into 2020 with me and will live in my pocket henceforth. You know what I'm saying? This one is another one of those for me. Uh, this is the Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado. Again, I have very dry skin. I have very dry under eyes. And sometimes certain under eye products can end up leaving those little, uh, what is it called? Milia, is that what it's called? Milia, the little white dots. Um, if it's too thick of a product, it's almost like it clogs the pores and then leaves those little white dots. I, I don't know, sometimes I just, I struggle with eye creams and I love eye creams because of how uh, thin and uh, crepey the skin under my eyes can be. And I have just, like I said, been completely blown away by this uh, Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado. It's very, very thick, but so far it's not clogging anything. I put on a nice thick layer of it at night and a, a thinner layer of it in the morning when I do my morning skincare. The time I let it sit for just a few minutes, it's good to go um, as far as putting on makeup over it. So I just have absolutely loved this. This has become a holy grail for me. I would say all three of these skincare products have now become like holy grails. These will carry on for me no matter what other moisturizers and serums and vitamin C serums and other things I try. Those are things that are gonna carry with me from now on. Now, speaking of some other like makeup application type products. So once I've done all of my skincare, when I sit down to do my makeup, I have been combining these two products. Like I said, my skin is very dry and I feel like I can almost never get enough moisture. And I have to be careful because sometimes I'll go so overboard with moisturizing products that when I start to put on my foundation, it starts to like pill up into those little like pieces because I just have so much Pro other kind of products on there, but this combination has been doing me right and not causing any of that with any kind of foundations or anything I put on, uh, tinted moisturizers or whatever afterwards. So what I do is I put on a pretty decent layer of the Smashbox uh, Photo Finish Primer Oil, and I just kind of really press that into my skin. Like I just let it like push, push, push into my skin. And then I put on a layer of the primerizer. This is another Smashbox Photo Finish Primer and Moisturizer in one product. This I always put on right before I apply my makeup because I might do my skincare and then go downstairs and uh, have coffee or I might do my skincare and then go downstairs and do homeschool with the kids and be gone for four hours before I come back to put on my makeup. And so in that case, this, these are the two things that I'm always putting on right before I put on my makeup, whether it's been 30 minutes since I did my skincare or four hours since I did my skincare. These are the two things that I follow up with uh, before I put on my makeup. And it has just made such a difference in how my skin has looked, the dewiness of my skin. Um, it's, you know, it's not been a terribly harsh or cold winter for us here this year, but I haven't had the same issues with dryness that I usually do when the air gets really sucked um, of humidity. There's no more humidity in the air and it's really dry. Uh, normally my skin just really kind of goes haywire with that, but it's been fine this year. And I think it's just due to a combination of good exfoliants, good moisturizers and all of that. So those are kind of my beauty product or my skincare and things like that. The only real makeup product I have to show you guys, I use a lot of the same stuff. Occasionally I'll buy something new, but I do use a lot of the same makeup products. But something that is new to my makeup collection, uh, it's a few months, I'm a few months into using it, but again, I've never found anything better. Like it's one of those things that I'm like, oh, I wish I'd had you for years. This is the Morphe concealer. I don't know uh, the name of the concealer, but it's just a Morphe concealer. And I was watching someone on YouTube use this and I thought, hmm, I don't really hear a lot of people talk about this. Granted, I don't watch most of the really like big beauty YouTubers. 
but when I tried it, I was just blown away. The pigmentation of this is so, so good. Um, I'm in shade or C145. Um, I'm very fair, as you can see, very, very fair. And this is a good pink undertone for me. It's very fair, it's very pigmented, and you just need the littlest bit. I just literally put a couple of dots under my eye, and then I actually pat this in with my finger because I feel like if I use a beauty blender, which is what I typically use, then what ends up happening is I put too much of this on and it, it just becomes too much because this is very pigmented. Um, and I feel like you can get really carried away with this, but it's not drying. So I know a lot of people really love the Tarte concealer. I can't remember which one it is, but there's a Tarte concealer that everybody loves, but it's way too drying on my under eyes. So I feel like this gives me the same kind of coverage that that does as far as the pigmentation being really good, but it doesn't have that dry look for me. Uh, so I've just really, really been loving this Morphe concealer. And I think it's like nine bucks or something. I mean, you can't beat that. I have tried a by Terry concealer that was probably 40 bucks. I mean, I've tried some really expensive concealers and this one has just been the best, the best for me. I did just wanna to touch on really quick, a few jewelry favorites. Um, this necklace, I've gotten asked so many times about this combination of necklaces I wear. I don't have the disc one on right now, but I wear this shorter necklace and then a longer disc one. Um, I will leave those linked down below. I've, I've shared them a few different times and linked them, but this particular one, just I never take it off. I leave it on all the time, no matter what I'm wearing. I absolutely love this necklace. It go, I wear it in the shower. I just, I never take it off. And it has been an absolute favorite of mine for most of 2019. I think I got it in the early summer, like late spring, early summer. And I absolutely loved it. So I will change out the longer one, the disc one, or an even longer one. Like I have multiple necklaces uh, that I wear that are longer, but this is my go-to sort of shorter necklace. I like to wear a combination of a short necklace and a couple of long ones or one other long one, two, three other long ones. Uh, I like to mix that up, but this is always my go-to for the short one. And then I picked up some pieces from Estee Lalonde's jewelry collection with Daisy London, and they have just absolutely become staple everyday pieces of jewelry for me. I have this ring that has like a sun rising kind of look to it. Um, I have this, like it's a set of three that you kind of put together and just roll on. I have another one um, that's just a gold, it's kind of like a gold solid ring. I absolutely love that one. And then this one is a newer one for me. And I can't remember if this is from Misoma or Missouri. I can't remember, but I will leave it linked down below. I love this ring. It looks so much like a David Yerman ring that I have honestly just like absolutely loved, but I'm not gonna buy. It's a, it's very, it's a very expensive ring and just not something that I'm going to buy. Um, but this has the same look of it and for much, much, much less. So I've been very pleased. I've been really into just kind of wearing a combination of gold rings on my finger and the Daisy London ones, um, Missouri, I think, I don't know if that's how you say it, Missouri, Missouri. I'm not sure if that's, I'm not sure about the pronunciation there, but, um, but yeah, so I've really been liking those. So I'll link some of my favorites down below as far as the like kind of dainty gold jewelry stuff that I've been liking. And then as far as fashion stuff goes, really the only thing that I felt like warranted mentioning because I have worn them so, so much are my Nisolo boots. Um, I have found out, and they are dirty, <laughs> um, unfortunately. I found out about this company this year. So Nisolo is uh, a company out of Nashville, I believe, and they are an ethical, sustainable, they believe in like radical transparency when it comes to uh, making sure that their products are made ethically and they're sharing you know, what they're paying workers and who they're using and factories and all of that. Uh, you can look into more of that on their website, but that's a push I'm making in 2020 and my wardrobe is, we'll talk about that later, but you know, more as much as I can, more sustainable, more ethical uh, products. And a lot of that will be buying stuff secondhand, which I have done for a while. But a lot of it is when I do need or want something new, looking for a a better option, looking for a more ethical, sustainable company to shop from. And Nisolo has really won my heart with their shoes. Uh, so this particular, this was my first pair of them. This is the uh, pair of like Chelsea boots. And you can see mine are pretty beat up. I don't, I'm not somebody who babies my shoes. I actually don't mind, especially with this particular boot, if they do look a little bit beat up. Um, and shoes like this, you know, there's certain circumstances in which certain kinds of weather and stuff you shouldn't wear certain shoes. I don't usually abide by those rules. So that's why my shoes sometimes look a mess. 
but I bought this pair. I have worn them with everything from jeans and a sweater to a really nice dress. I wore a really long flowy maxi dress on Christmas Eve and I wore these with it and I loved that it kind of just added that little bit of like a rustic feel to the outfit. I really loved that. And then they had a sale recently on some of their shoes that was, um, I think it was get 50% off or buy one, get one 50% off. So I did go and get, I just took this off my foot, literally. Um, another pair of these are the suede ones. It's like a chestnut suede. I've just been really, really pleased with the shoes. I feel like these are going to hold up for a really long time. Again, I'm at a place in my life at this time that I want to make more investments into pieces that are classic, timeless, that I know I'll wear a ton and that I won't be looking for a trend that's gonna change in two or three months and feel like I need something else. So I'm trying to avoid too much um, trendy clothing and going more with classic pieces and things I can keep for years and years. Um, and I feel like good, really good shoes like this, especially these kind of Chelsea boots are classics. They're never gonna go out of style and uh, it's just a really good investment for me and my wardrobe at this time. So I've been really, really pleased with those. Last thing I wanna mention as far as products go are sunglasses. Uh, every time I wear these sunglasses on stories, I get asked where they're from. Um, I am not somebody who has, at this point in my life, has invested in expensive sunglasses because I do have so many little kids that, and, and I'm so just clumsy with them. That's the truth, is that I'm just so clumsy and forgetful with them that I know I would ruin them and I just don't wanna spend $200 on a pair of sunglasses that's gonna get ruined. Um, but so these are like 15 bucks, I think, 10 or 15 bucks from Amazon. They are very, very oversized. I, I love that look, not everybody does. I love them, they remind me of my grandma, my gima. Um, I have so many memories of her when I was uh, younger going to visit her in South Georgia and we would hop in her car and go to the grocery store to pick up some sweet tea and she would have her little travel cup of tea with her and uh, we would listen to Patsy Cline and she had the most giant sunglasses. Hers were, uh, sometimes they were square but sometimes they were more round but she wore these massive sunglasses and that's just, um, that's one of my favorite memories of my Gima and so whenever I wear these sunglasses I think of her and I call these my Gima sunglasses. Um, so I have them in like a tortoise and a black and I absolutely love them. So if you really like a very, very oversized sunglass look, then you might like these. Like I said, they are mahusive. Uh, if you're not into that, then I would definitely not go for these. All right, so this is the part that's gonna be a little bit challenging for me. I think I'm gonna start with places that I visited this year that was, you know, and what was my favorite. I, I did a lot of traveling this year, a lot more than I usually do because I had some different work trips. I think I went to Texas twice, I went to Utah twice, I went to, um, I think I went to California, uh, I went to New York twice, and I went to Uganda. I did, and then of course all of our traveling at the beginning of the year in our RV through Florida and South Carolina and Georgia, we just did a lot of traveling this year. And if I had to pick, so, so tough for me because I loved my time in the RV with my family and my kids and that trip that we went on. Um, but I would have to say that like, for me, the trip that just tops them all was my trip to Uganda because it's so, it, every time, like trips like that are so life-changing for me. They're life-giving for me. They fill me up. They remind me of like what's important in life. And I always just come back feeling like I have a stronger sense of self. I come back feeling honestly like closer to God. I come back feeling usually very alive. I don't know, it's just, there's something so transformative about um, visiting different places and experiencing different cultures and things like that. And for me, the trip to Uganda this year was not only just the Ugandan people and the trip itself amazing, but the women that I went with were so amazing and all had an impact on me in various ways. It was such a transformative experience. There's just no other way to explain it. So that would have to be my pick for a trip that I went on this year. Now, as far as if I had to pick one singular podcast, hands down, it would have to be Lisa Whittle's podcast, Jesus Over Everything. I love Lisa and uh, her voice is made for radio podcasting or whatever. Her voice is so soothing to listen to. I met her in person recently and as soon as she spoke, I was like, ah, Lisa. Like just the sound of her voice is almost like so comforting to me. Um, but I absolutely adore her podcast. I've shared before about how I use it in my morning routine um, where she has these sort of shorter episodes that you can listen to that are like five minute chunks. Um, I just 
adore her. I think she's so wise and has so many incredible things to share with the world. Um, she is coming out with a book this year, which I'm super excited about. So yeah, the Jesus Over Everything podcast, hands down, wins my Podcast of 2019 award. Um, as far as a book goes, it was very, very hard for me. And I think with books, I'm always going to think of like what is the most recent that was really impactful to me. I've read a lot of really amazing books lately. A lot of them have been recommended to me from you guys, but I will say that um, The Polygamous Daughter by Anna LeBaron was a book that I devoured in one evening, sitting on the couch with my kids hopping all around me because I just couldn't put it down. And we've talked about it. I've talked about it a little on my vlog channel, but I just, I, I just loved that book. It's an incredible story about resilience and everything that she's come through and who she's become now, despite uh, her very, very difficult upbringing. So it's such a good book. I will leave that one linked down below if you want to check it out. Like I said, I've read so many amazing ones, but I just, I had to just pick one. Otherwise I would be here all day talking about books. As far as a documentary, I'm not going to pick a TV show because I just don't really watch TV shows. Y'all know that. Um, but documentaries I love. And so this year, actually very recently, this is why this one again is probably winning out for me. Um, that's actually not why, but we very recently watched One Child Nation, a documentary about the one child policy in China. And that whole documentary was so, I don't even have like accurate words. It was brutal and I just really don't even have the words. Like I, there were so many times during that documentary that I just sat there with my mouth open and like, wow. And obviously having a child adopted from China, so many, so much of that documentary hit very, very close to home for us. Um, so there was so much that we could learn from it. Um, not just about the one child policy, but about adoption in China. And there was just so much to be learned and it left me feeling sad honestly it left me feeling very sad but also a little more resolved in how i feel about international adoptions and uh kind of you know how i want to use my voice in the future for advocating for certain areas of ethical adoption as well as you know family preservation and and not going the adoption route so there was a lot there for me to unpack it was just a really fascinating documentary so i highly recommend that one if you have not seen it yet and the last thing would be a movie and i have to i have to pick this movie even though i haven't seen it hear me out for a second so i have told you guys for probably two years now about a book that i read that absolutely had a huge impact on my life and that was brian stevenson's book just mercy and that book has been made into a movie. So he, there is an HBO special about him, but this is a movie about the book Just Mercy. And so it came out on Christmas Day and I unfortunately have not had a chance. It came out in select theaters on Christmas Day and then it comes out everywhere on January 10th, I believe, or January 17th, now I can't remember. Um, but it, I have no doubt, will be incredible and amazing. Uh, the book, like I said, absolutely wrecked me and completely changed so many things for me. So I, I just cannot recommend the book enough. I just believe without a doubt that the movie will be just the same. So I am so excited to see that. Um, I really didn't see a lot of movies in theaters this year. I think I saw a handful and it's mostly like Avengers type stuff. So I'm not gonna pick that, but Just Mercy by Bryan Stevenson. I. I'm so excited to see it. Please, if you guys have seen it, let me know in the comments what you thought. I think I might do these videos seasonally. I think that will make a little more sense to have a winter and spring and summer and fall um, and have it kind of broken up that way. So that is my plan sort of moving forward. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in any of it, it will be linked down below in the description box. We have some very exciting 2020 content coming here. The new year, I'm going to be starting a whole new series about simplifying and decluttering. And I'm very excited. It's something I'm personally doing and I'm just bringing you guys along. And if you want to do it with me, you can, um, but I'm doing it and I'm bringing you guys along. So be sure to subscribe if you've not already, and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye.